young, like 13 young, like on my 13th birthday young, like birthday present from my girlfriend on my 13th birthday young, which uh, <laughs> it's a bit, it's a bit young. Um, and I'm going to tell you that even though everyone told me it was wrong, it was fucking so right. It was like the best, the best thing I have ever done was have sex on my 13th birthday. And I don't know where the keyboard is to go next. Do I? Loud door. Okay, so, okay, so before we go into it, I was sort of diving into the roots of virginity in themselves. Now, virgin uh, basically means like maiden. It always, no matter where I looked for it, it meant woman. Uh, so it had fuck all to do with men. Men are just like, whenever they lose their virginity, you get a pat on the back and maybe some goats and stuff in the Middle Eastern areas, and you get a few wives, and that's fine. But women, it was a huge thing for women. It was like, they were like these, these immaculate conceptions, like the Virgin Mary, which we will get onto later. Um, but yeah, the, the etymology of Virgo, which is Latin, basically means maiden or sexually inactive woman. Uh, the same in Greek as well. And then when it went a little bit towards the western of Europe, uh, it was like, does anyone speak German? No, okay, so I'm gonna butcher this. There's like Jungfrau or Jungfrau or Jungfrau or something like that, which basically means young woman, and it, it translates to, to virgin. So the virgin was a very uh, female orientated um, origin. Uh, the history which, a lot of this is basic common knowledge, but it is a personal milestone that uh, introduces the end of innocence for all you lovely ladies out there. Um, a, a deflowering, love that word, because it sounds fucking disgusting. I was gonna, I was gonna put like moist deflowering, but I didn't want to end sick. So um, yeah, it introduced the girl to womanhood, uh, and a woman would refrain from sexual contact with like anyone until Wednesday, as we all knew, no sex before marriage. Um, this means that she couldn't use any tampons, or back in the old days, like uh, it was like a rag, so hence the term on the rag. You're gonna learn so much of this stuff, it's gonna be great. Um, menstrual cups, because they're disgusting, and dildos, because uh, there was no vibrators back then, so you know, just you just like marble, I'm not gonna go into it. But, okay, uh, this was because inside every one of you lovely ladies, uh, there was, or still is, I don't know, or men, might be a bit weird, is a hymen. It's like a small piece of skin, a bit elastic, and when you have sex, that breaks, and that's what it's about. Um, and back then, in the old days, where everyone rode horses, um, uh, like the gladiator times, uh, that was how you could tell if someone was a virgin. If it was broken, they were like, oh, you're slags. And if it wasn't broken, they're like, oh, they're like Jesus. So it's that kind of way. Uh, the powers of virgins, virgins are like, they're seen as like nearly like gods, like nearly like a pope. So shame societies, I tried to do a bit of research myself into this, see as though I did this whole thing today. Sorry, Tom, I just winged it. Um, so shame societies are societies in the Middle East and the far over East Europe. Uh, going into Asia, so Japan and China, all the countries that end in Stan, like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, uh, Iran, blah, 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 everywhere where they all have like, like turbans and, and beards. So uh, there's that shame societies where honor was a huge thing. Honor was an absolute massive part of, of the lifestyle in Muslims and Christians. Now, um, Chinese and Japanese didn't do it to Muslim Christians. They were going to either Sikhism or Buddhism, that type of thing, or they were completely lackluster of religion altogether. Um, so shame societies were huge, bringing shame or honor to your family was a massive thing. Does anyone see like Mulan and stuff? Yeah, Mulan where she has to you know, take her father's sword, it's such cool, but she's a woman so she can't do it. Blah, blah. It's all about, it's all about um, shame societies. And virgins there, if they were virgins, they were huge counterpieces for families. So they were basically pieced off for other men uh, for weddings and they, be, they bring loads of honor to the family because they were virgins that had consummated the marriage with seven other um, men and become loads of people's wives or in the harem. Um, or the opposite side is if that if they were raped or if they were um, basically had sex before marriage or even if they were riding horseback or something the hymen did break, uh, what would happen is they would be shunned, they'd be cast out, the family would be shamed upon that type of thing. Uh, which leads into our wedding dresses, I didn't know this but yeah, the white wedding dress is an icon of purity, it's of innocence and when the woman would go and consummate the marriage in the middle of the party she'd like take a leave and you know, go with the fellow and be like yeah we're gonna have sex. Uh, they'd have sex in the wedding dress, and then the blood would go on the wedding dress, and then the husband would be like, yeah, she's a virgin, and take it off, and like go outside and sell it, they'd auction it off, like this is the end of innocence, it was like a wedding dress with blood, next. it was fucking disgusting. But um, yeah, they did that, um, hopefully you won't do that now, I won't do it in my wedding, but I don't know, maybe. But I, um, <laughs> which leads into AIDS, because it wasn't just centered around Asia and Europe, um, it was centered in Africa as well, uh, virgins in Africa are huge, absolutely massive, because People believe, stupidly, 
that if you have sex with a virgin, male or female, under the age of 14, I think it is, uh, it will cure AIDS. So men go around like, I want to go and cure AIDS, let's have sex with loads of virgins. And after trying one, they're like, oh, that didn't work, let's try another 50. Uh, and hence the spread of AIDS for Africa. It's a horrible, it's horrible. Um, yeah, then we lead back into religion again with Christianity and actual Islam because the Virgin Mary is like an absolutely enormous icon in virginity because she was the Immaculate Conception. She gave birth to Jesus without having sex, I don't think, if you believe that sort of stuff. Um, and in, she's actually mentioned more times in the Quran than she actually is in the, the New Testament. So um, she's seen as this massive icon as, as virginity. So all the females um, after her who are all virgins are seen as just as high as she is before the incense is taken. Prima Nocta, that's a lovely thing that us British um, decided to use and enhance. If you've ever seen Braveheart, it's featured in that. Um, basically, Prima Nocta is when the Lord of the Land, who owned like, all the shires and the boroughs of Armour, would say, that, oh, I'm going to invoke Prima Nocta, which means every time someone gets married, he'd take the virgin wives and have sex with them for the night and give them back the next day. He'd take everyone's innocence around the land. Um, and when they got a little bit too old, uh, or a little bit too incontinent, or just didn't really feel up to fucking loads of people at once, they basically... Um, address prima nocta which is they go and sell the, the virgins to other people virgins were seen as like this massive um it's, it's like selling cows or something you'd sell them out at bulk loads of virgins to other people um and sometimes and most of the time that brought in more money than taxes so it was a huge business for people uh which leads into virginity auctions now i was looking this up and even though i saw it on um, the news recently it's been happening quite recently a lot as well like people women have been selling the virginity on ebay i don't know if anyone's seen that like recently last year a few years ago they just sell the virginity on ebay because they want to pay for college tuitions and stuff yeah and it sells for millions absolutely millions just to have sex with a virgin, with a virgin. um you should look up that's, that's weird stuff uh, and the last one it's quite extreme this one is rape and execution which is going to lead into our uh, to our religious bit next because rape and execution was a huge um common place for virgins who had the virginity taken from them before um marriage Right, so religion. I'm touching on the two that I went into research for because one, I'm a Christian anyway, and two, I've looked extensively into Islam as well. So Christians first off is, it's like a then and now kind of thing. Um, so back in the olden days of uh, sword and sandals, um, women were seen as pure as the highest form when they were virgins. Uh, it was the key to the sanctity of marriage, mainly due to the Virgin Mary. You were seen as the, this high standing person if you were a virgin. Uh, if it was broken though, if, if someone was raped or if someone was um, cast out or had sex or broke the hymen in any way, um, they would be shunned, they'd be kicked out and banished, or sometimes they were kept in and, and disbanded as daughters and kept as slaves, they'd be servants, like a, a, a Cinderella kind of analogy. Um, yeah, they had a lovely thing though, uh, where if you were raped, you had the opportunity to marry your rapist. Um, it was either be shunned out of the whole family or marry the rapist and act as if nothing basically ever happened, which is a lovely thought to marry your rapist. And Forever. Uh, but if you were raped and didn't cry out for help, you must have enjoyed it. So you're stoned to death. It was a real. It, this is just going back to an era when there, there was no there was no commonplace for laws and there was no morality. It was all based on uh, theism and loads of and God and that type of thing. Um, and it was quite horrible. Whereas now uh, they are still um, held in high regard. Everyone gets told no sex before marriage when they grow up in a Christian society. Uh, fundamentalists though. Uh, they were still shooting you out. Uh, one of the key cases that I found was uh, the Westboro Baptist Church, a lovely group of people. Um, they basically uh, had a woman who went around, she slept with a, a few guys before she was married, and they kicked her out and they never spoke to her again. Uh, to the point where a, all of them, a lot of them are lawyers and they're sort of like trying to sue her to change her name because it's being a shame for the family. It's a huge thing uh, where most of religion has transpired and, and evolved with us, uh, and some of them still, still haven't. And there's no more executions, which is kind of nice because people die is not good. Um, Islam is a lot different.